this is appropriate since today's lesson we're going to be talking about an artist who had pretty much the same lunch every day for over 20 years Andy Warhol so Andy Warhol was what we would call a pop artist now pop art was a movement that started up in the late 50s early 60s now an art movement is when a whole bunch of artists are kind of all doing the same basic thing and they're all kind of related to each other and pop art was all about being colorful fun, mass-produced, big, uh, and Warhol was probably the best known of all of the, the pop artists. He did stuff that had to do with, you know, Coke bottles, and Brillo pads was like a cleaning product, and Campbell's soup cans, things like that, that, you know, stuff people would buy, part of consumer culture. And so he took those things and said, hey, I'm redoing this, and this is art. So he also did uh, portraits of people a lot of times, kind of like the self-portrait he did of himself, where a lot of times the images would be repeated. And that's the kind of thing that we're going to work on today. So if you haven't already, go ahead and check out. There's two links on my website that have information about Warhol. One is a great video by Tate Kids that's all about pop art. It talks about Andy Warhol as well as some other pop artists. And they also, the Tate Museum, it's in England, they also have their version of today's project if you want to follow along with that one my video is going to walk you through all of the steps in just a moment and let's take a look at our standards and objectives you, you guys do that while i finish up my lunch and i'll be right with you okay go for it today's anchor standard is standard number two organize and develop artistic ideas and work and our objective for the day is create a multi-panel pop art portrait in the style of andy warhol Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at our materials for this. First thing you're going to need is something to take a picture with, or if you just already have a photo, uh, that's totally fine. You could take a selfie. You could get a picture of someone else. Uh, I'm going to go, if you already have the picture, that's cool. I'm going to go with a picture of Lily, my dog. I got this really cute picture of her earlier today, and I printed it out. Now, this one's in color. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell that in this particular picture, but it is in color. Now, the thing about this is you're going to want black and white pictures for your uh, project. So, I've got a color picture, and I also made, you could make a, you could make four really big. You want at least four. You could potentially do more, but you want, probably want four. You could make them really big like this and then tape them together, or you could make them smaller. I printed this black and white out at 50%, and that way you can fit four of them onto one piece of paper. One thing that also you could do, and this is one of the things, this is also one of your materials. I'm not going to put it here on the table. It's a little big. A copier or a printer. You could make cop some copiers will make copies on one piece of paper. I didn't glue these on. It will do it for you where you can put them all on at the same time. If you want to do that, you can. If you have a printer or a copier that can do that, go for it if you want to. Might make your life a little easier. Otherwise, you can cut and paste things. The other thing you can do with these is you can take this, put it back on the copier, and just do it as, as one copy, and it doesn't look as good. I did another one with four. They don't look as good, do they? It starts to fall apart a little bit. That's one of the things that happened with a lot of Andy Warhol's artwork. The quality started to drop off. He would mass produce these things until they stopped looking exactly like what they're supposed to look like. Take that copy, make another copy of that. It really starts to fall apart. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a Warhol, and you can do some of the artwork by coloring in some of these areas. This one might be a little too much, but we can work around that. What we're going to do is we're going to color on top of it, 
you're gonna need some something to color with, depends on what you have at home. Highlighters would work great for this. Colored pencils are good. If you have crayons, markers, whatever, you can make a few copies, test some things out, see what works, see what doesn't, and that way you don't have to worry about, oh, I have to do it perfect on the first try. If you don't, that's okay, use a different copy. Make four or five copies of things and go from there. That is our first way of doing it. Now, like I was saying earlier, you might not be have you might not have all of these uh, materials. That's okay. There is a second way you can go about doing this. Okay, so no matter whether you use the first method I was talking about or the one I'll talk about in a little bit, you're gonna need the color in your pictures. I'll show you that second way of doing the pictures later. So if you don't have a copier or a printer, don't worry. You're still going to need to color it in. So let's test it out first. What we're going to need, doesn't matter if you use colored pencils, crayons, markers. I'm going to use colored pencils for right now. I'm going to pick six colors and we're going to use those in different combinations on each one. So let me see. I'm going to get a red, a dark blue, a green, a yellow, and orange. That's five. And how about my light blue? That'll be nice. All right, so I've got six colors, and I'm gonna mix them up on here. I'm gonna start on this one up here. Now, the cool part about this is we do not have to worry one single bit about being realistic with this. It's totally okay to have, you know, things all mixed up. My dog is... A, has white fur with little kind of tan spots and she was sitting on sort of a light brown sofa guess what I'm not gonna use any white or light brown so Warhol like to color people in with different colors and don't worry about whether the you don't have to worry about if it's perfectly in the lines on this one I'm gonna do Lily I can barely see where the, the ear is I'm gonna trace around it quickly I'm not going to worry about being perfect. I'm not going to worry about each little hair sticking out here. I'm not going to worry about... I'm just going to go all the way around. And I'm not entirely sure where the top of her head is, and that's okay. And I'm going to color all of this in lightly with orange. I want to be able to see that color underneath of there. I'm just going to go over the top of it and go a couple different directions lightly. I do not need to press really super hard. I'm going to go all the way around. So that her face is going to be orange. Now, this copy is a little wacky. So one thing you might want to do is go ahead and use your original photo to help guide you with what is, where, I know her arm is over here somewhere, but I gotta find that arm here. So let me get my original photo. And, oh yes, her arm is right here, kind of sticking out. So I'm going to color that in orange as well. Kind of hard to tell in that picture. You don't have to worry about it too much. So for this, I can just do, you know, if you're doing a person, you could do their hair with one color. I could do her nose. Even though I colored this orange, I could go back over this with blue. I'd color that a little darker right where it's, where it's a little darker on that part. I can actually push really hard with that. I'm gonna make everything else in the background green. So I've got three colors going on in this. If they overlap each other a little bit or if I miss some spots, guess what? That'll make it even better. I'm going nice and lightly so I can still see the details underneath. I missed some orange here and guess what? I like that. It messes it up a little bit. So that's one of the things about Warhol's artwork when he was, you know, 
he actually didn't paint these and he didn't color them in with colored pencils or anything. He did what was called a silk screen. Now, if you've ever seen, a, well, a t-shirt that's printed, that's a silk screen. A lot of stickers are silk screened. There's a, there's a piece of fabric that you can put uh, ink on top of and you pull some, uh, uh, a squeegee across it and it pushes the ink through the fabric. And if you block off parts of the fabric to not let ink through, they don't, it doesn't get colorful. It doesn't, doesn't bring the ink through. But if you've got the holes in the fabric for it to get through, like if we blocked off all of this green part and brought orange across here, it would color all this in in orange. So you have this big screen, you put it on top, you pull that across and you can let that dry and then do it again with green ink and go all the way across. And so he could make hundreds of these paintings even though they were silk screens. Now that's exactly what they do to make stuff that you sell, like t-shirts and stickers, like I was saying. So he was making art that was just like stuff you would buy in a store. And it was kind of new. People weren't used to that. People weren't even sure what he was doing was actually even art. And he kind of famously said, art is whatever you can get away with. So, and he also said, you know, I don't worry about whether it's really good or not. I let everybody else figure that out. And while they're trying to figure it out, I make more art. So I've got one. Now I'm not gonna use the same colors in the next one. Maybe I use one of them. That could be, I, you know, I'm gonna use the orange down here on this one. I'm gonna do some red for the background on this one. Maybe I'll make her light blue and go with a green nose. So I'll color these in and then we'll see how it's looking. copier that can print four up like this for you don't worry about it you could cut pieces of paper out you could do really big pictures you could cut small ones out you could do more than four as i always say you are the boss of your artwork make it look like yours now the trick here if you don't have a copier or a printer that you could use there is a way around it and it looks really cool. And if you do have a copy or a printer, stick around and listen to this because it could come in handy for something else. So for our second method of this, it's not one particular way of doing it. There's just a bunch of techniques that you could use to get a picture down on your paper. Now let's say I have a photo. Let's pretend this wasn't a copy and that it was a photograph. Don't use just a plain old photograph for this because you're going to mess up the picture and you're probably gonna get in trouble. So if you have a photograph, there's a couple of things you could do. You could put some tracing paper over it and trace it. And then you'd have the image where you could transfer that on. I'll show you how to transfer it. Or you could, if you have a piece of paper, if you have a copy of something, if you in some way have something that you could transfer over, what, the way you transfer it is you turn it over and on the back, Take a pencil, you could use oil pastel, a colored pencil. Pencil's great for this. I can, I don't know if you can see it on the video. Let me zoom in a bit for you. I don't know if you can see it, but I can barely see through here and see kind of these dark shapes. What you wanna do is not write with the point like you're used to. Lay it down and draw with the side. Get the whole back especially in the spots where you could see, like I can see the edge of the ear goes here. So I know I'm gonna need this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, and this doesn't have to be perfect because you can touch it up later. You just gotta get the basics of your picture down so that you know where everything is and you can fix it up from there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, 
You know, like if you get an office note, because you got to go get a Band-Aid from the office or something like that, and they write on the paper, and it gets two pieces of paper, and you tear them apart, and the teacher keeps one, and you send. That's the type of thing we're going to make for ourselves here. We're going to make your own carbon paper. So. And plus, it looks pretty cool. Now, this isn't just for this project, too. If you ever have something that you need to copy over a few times for a project, for class, for, you know, some sort of a report or something, and you got to decorate it somehow, and you need to copy a picture, or there's ever any reason why you need a copy of something, but you don't, you know, like you carry a copier around with you, this is an easy, fairly quick way. This is, this is the most... This takes the longest out of the whole thing. <laughs> just just putting the pencil all over the bag. Could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. All right, so now what I can do, if I want to do this in four panels to make sure I got the right spot, go ahead and fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Just so we know where to put it. I'm going to unfold. I'm going to fold it back the other way so it doesn't... Just, just give it a little bit of a fold there. Yeah, now I can see exactly where I need to go. And I can put my paper on there. Now, if this moves around, it's going to mess it up. So what you can do is if you get a piece of tape... And... Whoops. If you take your piece of tape and on the back of it, I'm gonna use, I like this blue painter's tape, but it's a little too sticky for this. It's gonna tear the paper. So if I have a t-shirt or some jeans or something, or, uh, oh here. I just happen to have a towel here in the garage for drying cars if you're washing them. You get a little bit of lint on the back of this, maybe two, three times. Jeans are great for this, t-shirts. Now it's not as sticky. It gets a little bit of that lint on there, and I can stick it to the back of this. I don't need to worry about that top part too much. So I can stick it to the back here. That way I can see how it looks underneath, and it won't shift around. If it shifts, then I'm in trouble. So, what works great for this is if you use a ballpoint pen, then you can tell where you've been. So, I'm going to start up here, and again, like I said, if I don't hit every single little spot of this, it's okay. I'm just going to make some squiggly lines for where her, her scruffiness is over here. She hasn't gotten her hair cut for quite a while. I don't need every little detail. Plus, since it's in pencil, I can erase parts of this. This just makes it super easy to draw it the way I want to draw it when I am done. How's this looking here? Aha, we're getting there. Don't let it shift. Even though it's taped down, it could shift around on me. So, got to be a little bit careful with that. Now, I can't see there from my original. It's so light. Oh, okay, I can use my original to kind of guide me it's going to do this. It's going to come up here. And then I'm going to go all the way up to the top. I can draw on top of that tape. It doesn't matter. This, this that you see here is not the picture. It's what's underneath is the picture. Oops, almost forgot her eye. Oh, yeah, her leg. I can get the 
edges of the picture. I could shade in some of these dark parts over on the side. Whoops. I can erase that little extra line there that I goofed up. And that one too. So if I just put some lines in here. Always telling people, hey, don't don't press too hard. Don't press too hard. You're gonna have to press kind of hard on this. I'm not pressing hard on some of these because I want it to be light. Let's see what happens if I darken this in really well. Do I like that? Oh yeah, look at that. That's cool. talking. So if I just kind of give it a little bit of shading here, and then I'm going to color over the top of all of this. Looking good. So now like I say, you can you can do this with colored pencil even, and then you'll have, you know, red underneath, which could be really super cool. Now I can color in over the top of this, maybe with my, you know, uh, highlighter pens. So maybe I do all of Lily just with orange. And then I can darken in those lines afterwards, maybe with colored pencil. This is where having things not be totally perfect is actually a really good thing. Oh, you know what? This is why you tape it on here. I realized I didn't do the shadow right in here. So I can flip this back over. It might be a little bit off, and that's actually not too bad of a thing, because that's what happened with Warhol a lot. His, what you call the, the registration on the the uh, silk screening, how things line up, that's what that's called when you're doing that, would get a little bit off and things would, you know, the color around the face would be just off a little bit. It makes it more interesting, actually. Yeah, that's not too bad. I almost wish it had been more off. That's okay, though. Uh, this is my first one. And again, I could... I could fold the paper and do them right on here. I could do four separate ones. I could do two big ones. You are able to adjust this project however you need to, depending on what you have at home, what picture you're using, what supplies you're using, any of those things. You can make those adjustments as you see fit. It is your project. You are in charge. You say, hey, I like what Mr. K is doing with that one part. But I don't know about that other thing. Maybe I'm going to do it a little differently. That's totally cool. Not a problem. Let's try the yellow, see what happens here. this with some black. Have 
however you want to do it. It's up to you. I think I might let this marker dry a little bit. It's a little soggy, not wet like paint, but kind of messes up the paper. As much as I don't mind it being a little sloppy in some spots, I don't want it to tear through the paper. So I'm going to let this dry and then show you what it looks like after a little while when I get a nice black marker and go over some of these lines and darken it in a little bit. Okay, so after it got all dried up a little bit, I went through and I looked at my original picture so that I could kind of compare and see if there's anything that I needed that I couldn't see on the picture here and went through with, whoops, <laughs> went through it with my dark pen and a few more things I could probably add to this. There's a bit of a shadow underneath this ear. I could, I could just put a few lines in there and make a little bit more shadow. It's a little darker on this side. So I'll go ahead and darken some things up. Right in here under the ear, it gets pretty dark. And over here, got these lines crossing over each other. So there's ways to go in and add those extra little shadows and such. And go right back over the top, trace around the outside of that area. And gave her some, some eyeballs instead of just a big blue area. So, there's ways to do this. Go through, try a few things. You don't have to make the one piece of paper perfect. I could trim this out and glue it or tape it onto another piece of paper. And if I do this one and it doesn't work out that great, if I you know do another one over here and I don't like it, I can just cut it off and put a new one there. So test it out, try some different things. I'm going to show you another way to transfer your image onto a piece of paper. And this would probably work a lot better with, uh, uh, you know, if you had a photograph or something like that, or another copy that you didn't want to mess up and you don't have a copier. I'm going to show you another way to trace stuff onto your image. All right, now for this method, we're going to need a window. So. You're going to have whatever picture, it could be a, a photograph, it could be a copy, but maybe you only have one and you can't keep, you know, can't do anything on this. So what you're going to do is you're going to get some tape like you did before. You're going to get your piece of paper that's folded into fourths. And instead of putting it on the front like we did before, I'm going to put it on the back this time. I want to have, I'm going to see the back of both things. I'm going to see the back of this one. Here's the front, here's the back. It's hard to see that it's, the back because you can see the light coming through here and that's how this is going to work that's the whole point to this one i'm going to find the right spot remember we've got our tape that's not too sticky or else it's going to mess it up let me make it in a couple of smaller pieces here unstick it a little bit more and what i'm going to do is i'm going to tape it to the back in a couple of different spots Oops, I don't want to do that. There we go. I'll bring it around to the front here a little bit. There, now this is taped onto here. And I'm going to tape it up on the window so I can see the front of it towards me. Now, I can see right through that and it's like my piece of paper has turned into a piece of uh, tracing paper almost. So I can go through here, I can see right around the edges. Might not be a bad idea to get your original picture to look at in case you're thinking, is that the line or is that the, where, where am I supposed to go? Happens a lot with this because you can't see it that well. If you're using a photograph, it's going to be really thick and it's going to be hard to see. So you want some light that's coming right in on the window. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about all the tiny little details. If I get pretty much as, as much as I can kind of mapped out, 
I can just redraw it later. Another thing you can do, you can just draw pictures. I mean, you don't have to trace or copy picture. If you want to just draw some pictures of your own, that's totally okay. So I'm going to see where the eyes are going to go. I left the original, but I can see this one, so I can kind of make it look like that. I'm going to draw lightly so I can erase it later if I really feel like I need to. It's hard to see some of this, and that's okay. If they don't look perfectly identical, it's almost better, actually. It makes it more interesting. So I'm just barely putting in some details here because I'm going to fix it up later. It looks about the same as the other one. I'm going to put in my lines around the outside. I taped over that out. Once I untape it, I will fix that. I think that's where it all goes. And now I didn't really draw that much on this part. And that's okay. I'm going to fix it up after I take it off the window. I'll take it back out to the garage and kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay, we're back out at the work table here. I traced around. Now it's pretty light. I went through it lightly. I'm going to carefully take this off the back. Notice it's not too sticky. I get rid of that. Take that right off of there. I've got that one back there. I've got this one. Take these guys off so I can do some work here. I'm going to just leave it like that for right now, and I'm going to go in with my highlighter pens. Um, I know I said six colors before. I've only got five highlighters. If that's all you've got, that's okay. That's how, that's how we roll these days. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just do this lightly. I'm going to do my... I'm going to save my shadows. Like, I have this really nice... A felt tip pen. If you've got a felt tip pen, if you do the highlighter over the top of it, it's going to mess up your pen. Or it's actually, it's not going to mess up your pen. Your pen's going to be fine. It's going to mess up the ink on your drawing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that after the fact. I'm just going to cover over everything this time. I'm going to make it a little bit different. I'm not going to do it super, super heavy. I'm kind of running out of highlighter here, and you know what? That's okay. I can still see that pencil through there, and that's the most important thing. All right, I'm going to let this highlighter... Sometimes you got to give him a moment. You, you've used it a bunch, and they need some time to recover. So let me see here. What do I want to use? Uh, I'm going to go orange on this background. I want to use like the, the purple for the shadows on here. It's basically three colors on each one of these. Now yours could have more colors and that's okay. You could do more than five or six colors at a time. If you wanted to, you know, go different colors, let it rip. It's your artwork. You are the boss. Okay. Oh yeah, I went over that a little bit. Guess what? That's a good thing. We don't mind that at all. It should go quickly. You can tell by looking at a line if it was done quickly or if somebody did it really slowly. They have a different feel. You can kind of see how it tails off at the end there. So don't be afraid to go in here and really, maybe when you're going, if you're outlining stuff, it might, it might take you a little bit. Don't be afraid to go in and go quickly. And if it gets a little loose, which as I always say, is one of those nice art terms for a little bit sloppy, and that's okay. Yeah, there's that spot that I missed because the tape was over it. 
Doesn't matter, I could fill it in, I can figure that out. I'm gonna darken up that green a little bit in a moment once my, my highlighter pen recovers a little bit. I used these pens with some other classes for a project and they run out pretty quickly once uh, three or four entire classrooms of kids colors a whole bunch of stuff in. So, yeah, there we go. That's okay. It's a little blotchy. I like it. I'm going to go with that purple in here. It's pretty dark, and that's okay. I like it that way. Looks a little different because it's over the top of the green. That's a good thing. Oh, can't forget my shadow area inside the ear. Right over here in this little shadowy area. There. Now, I feel like, this, yeah, this paper's okay. It's not too wet. The other, the yellow highlighter was really kind of soggy. So I can go back in here. Not exactly the same as the other one. That's okay. We get the idea. I've got that yellow, or yellow, that orange and the green. I kind of went too high up with this. That's okay. It's a little bit off. We like a little bit off. For this project, that's even better. So let's see here, I'm gonna try to show those eyes again. Just do a little right over there. Just got the kind of a, like an eyebrow coming around. Do the other eyeball. I'm not even gonna do the line at the bottom there. I'm just gonna go with this. I can make it a little darker here. I don't have to do the whole thing, I just put a few lines in. Like that. Do a bit of this. Don't forget this arm. I'm doing a nice dark line underneath the hair. It's going kind of back and forth a little bit. It makes it look like a little bit of a shadow. And I'm going to intentionally go very light on the top because there's more light coming in there. And there's a little little bit of a shadow underneath the hair. Doesn't need to be too much. Um, I didn't really put any lines in where the the pillows were folded. So I'm just going to like this is kind of from the sofa. That's not exactly the same, and I went off of here a little bit. Not a problem. There was a little bit of a shadow up here. A little something there. Can't forget my lines around the outside. Oh, look at that. It's a little crooked. The orange is down below it. It's down below the orange. That's a good thing. We like that. I kind of messed up in a way where I drew the ear on all these up above that line, it looks like it's coming out of the picture. So that's even better. Sometimes you can turn these mistakes into something that really works nicely for your picture. What's the Bob Ross happy accidents? That's a happy accident. some of these in here. Now, if you have one copy that you were able to do this on, what you could do instead of, you could use this and do another one. You could also glue it right on here and use this piece of paper right here just like it is. I think that's what I'll do in a little bit when I'm done with this. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit. I didn't realize it was so far out. Sorry guys. So. All right, so basically you're, you're getting the idea now that 
This isn't a, this is exactly what you need to do kind of project. There are, uh, there are numerous ways you could make this happen. I've given you a few of those ideas. And what I'm interested in right now is to see you guys get on out there and try it out. I am going to, first off, I'm going to just do a little bit more shading over here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish up these other two. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me talk and listen to me while I do all of this. I'm going to speed things up a little bit here. And I want to see what you guys can do on your own, turning this into your artwork. got two versions of the same project and to be totally honest with you there could have been a whole lot more of these done totally different ways um, if you've got a copy or a printer go for it if you don't you can work around it even if you just drew a picture you could copy that same exact drawing using some of the techniques we talked about here and if you don't use it on this project you can keep that in mind and use it on something else later on so all the stuff that we're talking about in this project and a lot of our projects all the time really it, it, they're just guidelines they're just ways to help you get there help you get through your project how can you turn it into your artwork these aren't meant to be the instructions that you follow a hundred percent these are some guidelines to help get you there so you know it's, it's kind of like Andy Warhol once said art is what you can get away with Take that in mind, take these instructions, and go see what you can get away with with this stuff. This is a good way to do it. Um, that's your assignment for today. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do. I've kind of worked up a bit of an appetite after all, the, all that. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, chicken noodle. Hey, all right. All right, you guys go have fun. I'm going to do this. I'll see you later. Take care.